Hi, you guys. Welcome to our Leapfrog Hacks Live with Javanka Sierras. It's our last, it's our last, last, last one. And I'm so excited that it's with Javanka. Javanka, tell everybody hi. <laughs> hello, Nicola. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. We've been here, kind of like part of this process from the beginning. So I'm excited that we're having this conversation today. I won't call it an interview. I think we should be a conversation. It's a conversation, a divasation. So we're just gonna <laughs> yes. sit here and talk <laughs> like That's divas about uh, some some wonderful wellness and, and health uh, tips and, and hacks uh, from the business side. Not mm -hmm. necessarily, uh, well, we can talk a few, I guess, about your body and your mind and your <laughs> spirit and all that but mostly from a business side. So I hope that we have some ladies who are online. If you are, please click like, hit a heart, type a comment. That's always great. We want to know that we're talking to somebody and not just each other. So <laughs> we are on Facebook Live right now. We're excited that you guys are here and uh, we want to dive right into the content. So let us know that you're there by leaving us a content. Hi, hi, Celestine. I see that you left a comment. Thank you so very much. If there's anyone else who's out there, please help us out, Celestine, or anyone else. Please share this video. Share it in our um, Fit, Fun, and Fabulous groups. All of them, the diva hood everywhere. Let them know that we are live. Um, and if we have anyone on the LeapFrog side, please go ahead now and share the video yeah. out to the VIP groups and everywhere they need to go. Feel free to share my page too. I think I shared, but I may not be able to multitask. I'll try. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, we see Natalie's on. Hi, Natalie. We're here. We're here discussing your book. Uh, most specifically, we are discussing Hat 18 with Javanka Sierras. Yes. <laughs> so if there's anyone else who is online go ahead and do some likes for us and let us know that you're there otherwise we'll go ahead and get started as we yeah. see others join in so Jamaica, how are you feeling are you excited? i'm feeling i'm feeling great just ready to get started i'm ready to dive into the questions and excited about this amazing book that um you know already changing the lives of many women. I mean, I, I wish I had a book like this when I first started uh, my entrepreneurial journey. I did have Natalie because we have been friends quite literally since about just a few months before I left my corporate job. Oh, wow. And um, so she's been instrumental in helping me in that process of growing a business and understanding what it is to become an entrepreneur and, and moving away from the fear of like, what is this fancy word that we talk about entrepreneurship? It's, you know, remember her saying things like, you know, do you remember when your grandmother used to like, you know, or your great grandmother used to iron shirts for the people in the neighborhood or used to cook for the men that would go to work every morning? She yeah. was an entrepreneur. Oh, and so man. they're like, oh my God, we, especially multicultural women, um, you know, women of color have seen our mothers and, and grandmothers be entrepreneurs probably for hundreds of years. For hundreds of years. Well, you know what, Javanka? I think it's just, uh, you said a lot of things that I want to touch on. But the first <laughs> the first thing I want to touch on is, man, so you've na you and Natalie have been friends since you started your entrepreneurial career, if you will. Now, what a blessing is that? Like, that's insane. That's the most, that's the best resource that you can have. So help, help us out, uh, Joe, and let us know, how did you guys meet? And I know it's in a book. So if you read the book, you already know this story. But yeah. if you haven't, go ahead and give uh, some of the folks who are watching just a little bit about how you and Natalie met and uh, how your business came to be, if that's okay with you. Sure. Of course. So I'll tell you, I, in a previous life, I was an executive in the entertainment industry. I uh, moved from my uh, homeland of Puerto Rico uh, when I was in my early 20s to New York to kind of follow my dreams and life. I went to school at NYU, uh, graduate school, and then I worked in music publishing in the entertainment industry, specifically music, for about 12 years or so. Um, and I climbed the corporate ladder relatively quickly. I became one of the youngest women in the executive suite, what they called people at a VP level or above. And I was one of three women of color worldwide. 
mm. at that level. And um, so I was doing great, traveling the world, working with fancy people like Beyonce and Jay Z and Crazy Kanye and you know the, the Motown Carnival and Sting not, and all not kinds the of Crazy Kanye. <laughs> There's a lot of really fancy, sexy sounding, you know, ideas and tones to this particular career. But unfortunately, I was getting very sick. I was very stressed out in my body. I was not taking care of my body. And I decided to, of course, Western medicine didn't have a lot of solutions in terms of what, how could I get my body to go back to, to a state of healing. And I decided to not take no for an answer, got angry. Like one of the chapters in the book said, I did not get frustrated. I just got angry and decided to channel that anger into action. So I became my own wellness advocate. And uh, what I learned not only helped my body heal, but I started coaching some of my coworkers. And I realized that I had a knack for coaching and mentoring people and helping people in that journey through health. So that became such a passion that I left my corporate job, went back to school, got certified as a coach, and uh, left my corporate job uh, at the end of 2011. That's when I met Natalie. And uh, we met at a conference for women entrepreneurs or women that were trying to learn to become entrepreneurs or were in their journey to become entrepreneurs. Uh, and um, we just gravitated towards each other. We just realized that in a, this group of 300 women, all of the little Latin girls were like, by the end of the weekend, we were all literally took over the stage and started dancing salsa. <laughs> and we just, uh, we realized that we were more or less the same age and, and uh, we both were based in New York City. So it was a natural, very organic kind of thing. We had a lot of things in common, right? Like we were, you know, super sassy, super, you know, strong and driven. Uh, like I said, more or less the same age, childless. Um, you know, we're not married. So we were like, we're going to be friends. This is what's going to happen. This is just going to uh, happen. <laughs> yeah. And so she told me her story, which was, of course, fascinating, as, as the people who read the book uh, can attest. And um, that was it. That was literally like a love affair that's been like seven years in the making. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And through your connection with Natalie, you and I were able to meet. So exactly. that's, that's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So let's move on and talk a little bit about your participation in the book Leapfrog. We are excited over the top, not just because it's a book from Natalie, but but also because it's a book that actually speaks to the stories of brown women like you and I, and mm -hmm. also just to any entrepreneur who feels like the underdog. It yeah. contains tons and tons tons of hacks, hacks within hacks in some <laughs> cases. Um, so let's talk about the hack that you're mentioned in, which is hack number 18. Mm -hmm. And it talks about passive income. So, you know, we hear a lot of stories about go ahead and get your, you know, your passive income going and then you can just sit and watch the money roll in. <laughs> right. your, your thoughts about that is passive income is actually sweaty work. And yeah. you say that there's no such thing uh, as do nothing and then make money. And so yeah. how has your work ethic contribute, contributed to your success? Yeah, so it's totally true. There's no such thing. I mean, when you first start this journey as an infopreneur, right, like a person that not only uh, offers services, but offer info products online, especially, which is one of my my verticals in my business, uh, I was just mesmerized by this idea that I can create it. I have a lot of information. I'm a talker. I am a phenomenal teacher. I know that I can actually educate people on my particular area of expertise. So let me let me write a book. Let me buy some product that teaches me how to do this. And then once, and then I'm going to create this product and I'm going to sort of send it off into the universe and it's going to be amazing. Nothing could be further from the truth, right? You, you need to learn the what, then you need to learn the how, then you need to come up with the money to support the how, not only to support you and pay your bills, but also to create these products, right? Like you need websites, you need uh, ways to distribute this information, you need to market and promote. And sadly, it all sounds very easy in, in theory, 
Right. Uh, I would, I, one of my biggest pet peeves is, is this specifically, is that you hear a lot of experts saying I'm making seven figures with all this passive income, which might be very true. What you don't know is that they spend seven years struggling right. mm -hmm. with building a team. Like you can't do it alone, right? Like no. you might be an expert on your particular niche, but you don't know how to build a website or you don't know how to create a copy that is engaging and is gonna get the people to actually purchase from you. Exactly. So, so I want people to be realistic about those goals. While I do believe that you could get to a point to, that you can actually make some passive income, it is not going to happen overnight. Right. And you need to have a very clear, specific plan, not just for the building the infrastructure, but for the time that you're going to spend marketing and promoting and engaging with other people with larger audiences that will hopefully sell for you in exchange, perhaps for, you know, a piece of the pie, if you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I totally agree with you that it's total sweaty work. You put in the work first. And I also agree that maybe down the line, it could end up being some comfortable residuals for you. Absolutely. Um, but you have to lay the groundwork. You have to lay the foundation. And unfortunately, kind of like your wellness story, your wellness journey, people give up too fast when they don't see yeah. the results that they had in their mind. So it's right. really good for you to lay it out there and just level set. Like, listen, you may see, you know, a person A, Y, Z doing, uh, sorry, A, B, C doing X, Y, Z. <laughs> you may see them do it now, but don't, don't compare your current chapter with their end of the book, right? You may yeah. just be starting and they're probably on, on the Absolutely. end. So you don't give up. You got to put in the work and then it'll all, it'll all shake itself out. Correct. So then Hack 18 also talks about how despite your appealing brand, you still face challenges because of competition in a very crowded health and wellness space. How do you make your mark? in such a popular industry? What did you do to differentiate yourself in other words? Listen, I will be the first one to tell you that I made a lot of mistakes at first. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I am dynamic. I have, I have this great larger than life personality. I'm cute. I'm just going to, like things are going to come to me by osmosis. Right. Because I'm cute. That's right. I like that as a exactly. point. Because I'm cute. Uh, I actually thought I have I have a lot of knowledge, but people don't know that, right? Like you, you, you can just start creating a YouTube channel and start sharing your content, and it doesn't mean that people are gonna come to you because there's just too many people. You'll just become a a a just a, a, instead of becoming a big fish in a small pond. I actually went in there and decided to be this semi-large fish, but the pond was so huge that there's no way, there was too much noise. Um, so about two or three years, maybe about three years into my um, entrepreneurial journey is when I realized, okay, I'm doing this completely wrong. I'm just, I'm just fighting against this huge current and I need to be very niche specific. Like you, Nicole, one of the things that I love about your brand so much is that it's very niche specific. And I love that about a lot of brands and I, made that mistake and so if if anybody that's listening will get get take something out of this is just be very specific in your niche and very specific in your brand and message before you branch out into attracting more people okay what i like I, that point javanka if you could though could you share what was your i guess target audience initially and how did yeah. you kind of narrow it down to what your current niche is so my my original audience was women that were that needed health and wellness. Oh, that's everybody. That's every dang girl <laughs> woman on the planet. Everybody, and I was like, I there's that's a big pool. So yeah. inevitably, somebody will come to me. The problem is that when you're trying to share that message, it gets diluted. There's just not enough clarity about what's in it for them. For and that so people go person. like, "This is great," but. So are these other 15 people and this one person has a New York Times bestseller and that other person has a TV show. So I'm just going to go with these people and not focus too much on this one girl. Instead, I realized that I love natural cures. I love things like herbal remedies, like things that 
I knew a lot about. I can take a plant and tell you how this plant can help you deal with your UTI or your or your headache or your hormonal issues. Awesome. And so once I realized that I was the herbal girl, <laughs> I, I pivoted slowly towards that particular niche. And so now it's a lot easier to attract a lot, an audience of people that are looking for natural mm -hmm. cures for herbal remedies. So every time you type in natural cures or herbal remedies on Facebook or on, on YouTube, you'll find one of my videos. That is super awesome. And what I love, love, love about what you're saying, Javanka, it is like the complete opposite of what people think, to be honest, right? Because yeah. you think, because I remember having a struggle with them myself about my own brand because it's, Christian based is mostly women of color and we call ourselves divas. So we talk a lot about Christ. So that right there is really narrowing my pool of people. And initially I thought, man, I'm isolating all these other, you know, women. Literally who made seven billion other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but really what I'm doing is speaking directly to those who have a similar heart, a similar spirit, a similar energy, who naturally will gravitate to who yeah. I am and then perfecting that, right? right? And so versus trying to have a voice in all these other areas for which I, you know, I'm, I'm not well versed. Right. So and so it even though, sense. Correct. So even though the niche is relatively small, then you can branch out into what you're offering those people. So instead of just offering, like just to give you one example, I, I offer some infra products. I offer quarterly cleanses and then I offer individual coaching. And so even though the pool has become smaller, the group of people that actually mm. are there have yeah. different ways in which they can actually work with me. Yeah. So you don't need to be too concerned, especially at first, that, oh my God, do I have enough an audience? Am I really going to make money doing this? Is this really going to happen? The truth of the matter is that there's many ways in which you can market to those people, but, but having a brand that is uh, just very, very passionate about you and about what you have to offer is critical. And I think the book touches on this, not just on my hack. There's a number of other oh, hacks. My goodness, yes. you, you're better off with a smaller audience that is very um, passionate about your brand and is very loyal and will continue to buy from you and will more importantly spread the word out at you uh, about you and eventually it'll grow organically and of course eventually you're going to have to um put some money into the brand and and help it grow that way but that first step that particular you know groundwork is so critical oh i love it i love it and what we have just touched on several hacks so let, let me just kind of go through, you know, I'm book <laughs> right now. And I believe, and you can uh, agree or disagree, I believe we've touched on forget passion, find things you want to punch. So mm -hmm. identifying something that personally, that you personally connect with, Absolutely. that you want to fix and resolve, and then sharing that with your group of people. We talked about that. We also have been talking about climbing in bed with your customer. Like not just being a business owner, but ha we have a relationship going on. Yeah. I am your advisor and yeah. your consultant at this point. So we have a different kind of relationship. I'm climbing in bed with you. In other words, I'm really understanding your needs right. and delivering directly to your needs versus delivering to you what I want you to know. Right. right? I mean, we have been in this thing together. Absolutely. Exactly right. We also talked about, of course, passive income is sweaty work. That's hack number 18. So we're <laughs> all in section two. Uh, and the book is divided into ready, set, go. So we're in section two, which is the set uh, section. And we're, we're diving in and tearing that <laughs> apart. And I really, really love um, how just natural dialogue, right, is pulling out all these key points in this book. And that just goes to show you that the book really does contain yeah. all aspects of what you need to deliver Absolutely. and in such short, uh, quick and insightful ways. They're like right? actionable items. They're like, you know, I, 
and, and I, I think you and I have discussed this, like ideally a book like this could actually be taken by a group of women um, in their, you know, monthly book club, right? But instead of just it about, it just about an entertaining book, maybe it is a group of women that are in a mastermind that want to support each other in their entrepreneurial journey. Right. And they want to, and maybe one of them is in the go section and the other one is in the set section and the other one is in the fund section. It doesn't matter. There's like every single one of them. You can literally take every single hack and give it one week. And there's yeah. 50 of them, so it'll probably take you a year to go through all Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd be hacking all year. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that because there yeah. are so many women who are sitting on their dreams, sitting on their hopes, sitting on their vision for lack of action. And yeah. if you need that action, if you need yeah, that first exactly. step, this is definitely the, the book that you would need to go ahead and get started. So let's go on. Okay. Next question. Natalie goes on in the book to mention that the online community is where you feel like you're really serving your mission because of its affordability. What is your advice for entrepreneurs looking to grow their business online? I'm I'm like <laughs> this with this one. I want no two girls. So what? What so is your advice? You need to get out of your comfort zone if you're not that comfortable with social media. I personally, it's not my natural inclination to have to tell everybody in the world what I'm up to. Mm. Uh, I had to get out of my comfort zone when it, when it came to that. And I still share some things that are personal. Most of my social media channels are relatively business oriented. My tone is very colloquial because I'm talking about natural cues and herbal remedies and the wisdom of the ages. And so it gets a little woo woo and a little kind of like you, you need to be, you need to embrace your inner uh, hippie in order to do that. <laughs> so you, what I what's worked for me is one of two things. Number one, there's a lot of social media platforms. And so I wouldn't tell you to, focus on all of them at once because that's a full-time job and it's just mm -hmm. highly overwhelming. Yeah. But if you focus on one or two, I wouldn't focus just on one also because that, that that is too narrow. Mm -hmm. I will pick two. In this particular case, at the moment that we are actually having this conversation, uh, uh, Instagram is the, more, the most engaging one, right? Where most people seem to be um, showing up. And a lot of people are actually engaging in transactions, right? Like you can actually purchase things that you find on, on uh, Instagram oh, versus yeah. stuff that you find on Facebook. Yeah. I, when I first started about six years ago, Facebook was it. So I focused on growing my Facebook and my YouTube channel. Why YouTube? Because I love the camera. I love to talk. I love to show people what I'm doing right, with respect to these particular remedies. So it, it came natural to me. My first language is not English. I don't consider myself the best of writers. So I didn't want to create a blog or a system that was all in writing. I wanted to be able to talk my yeah. talk. And if I made mistakes or if, you know, the accent got thicker at some point or another, I did not care. Like most people think that the accent is cute. So I'm like, whatever. I think it's so, super cute, girl. Thank you. <laughs> so I grew my audience in those two verticals, right? In on Facebook. And um, and YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of leaving uh, Facebook a little bit to the side now because right now I have about fifty thousand followers there. They're well taken care of. I still communicate with them. I still engage with them on a regular basis. But my focus is now growing other social media platforms like Instagram, and continue to grow face uh, YouTube because I still consider YouTube my primary form of sharing information with the world. And a lot of clients, a lot of prospects come to me through my YouTube channels. Really? So I, it's in my, yeah, it, it will continue to be my primary focus, at least until there's another such platform that allows me to continue to grow my audience, ideally through video. 
That is super awesome. And I love the advice to focus on two because there's so many. It can end up being overwhelming if you want to try and do Twitter and Pinterest and IG and Facebook. Yeah. And you're, you might, at the moment, you might be a solopreneur. And right. maintaining four different platforms at once is just not oh, impossible. Unless yeah, you have you're to totally study. setting yourself up for failure. So be, right. be careful for, you know, setting up goals that are just not realistic. So right. I and really until do. you have the funds, you might grow to a point where you can actually hire people, social media managers, even the social media managers, if they're working on a part-time basis, they will be the first ones to tell you, you need to focus on one or two, maybe or three. Two. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you know, and also one other thing that's super important, you might want to go into all of those uh, social media platforms and, and start studying them and recognizing which ones speak your language best. Ah. So if you're the kind that is more political or more kind of like in your face, perhaps Twitter is for you. Yeah. If you are the one that loves to take beautiful pictures and it's all about the ideal of life, Mm -hmm. then Instagram might be for you. If your audience is much older, like maybe people over the age of 35 up to 65, maybe Facebook is what you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, in my audience tend to be a little bit on the younger side. And last, last, so I that's another one of the reasons why I pick YouTube. The average user on YouTube is uh, 25 years old. Oh, Awesome. And probably the same is true uh, for for Instagram as well. Do you have any tips that you want to share for the entrepreneurs who are watching who may find themselves with an audience who is a little bit older and they are on Facebook? How did you grow your Facebook audience to 50K? Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. So Facebook has shifted incredibly in the last few years really? since yeah. I was growing my my business. I have had a few meetings. Um, once once you're you're considered a, uh, they have a word for that. Uh, but people that are, I think it's forty five thousand or between forty five thousand and a hundred thousand, which is where I follow or where I fall. Um, they will start sending you information. They will invite you to their mixers. And we'll tell you what's up with the brand. And then you utilize that. Um, okay. to grow. So what I've learned in the last 12 months, truly, <clears throat> is that they are definitely more interested in video. Mm. Uh, video is the thing. Yeah. Uh, the, live, um, the live broadcast like this one is yeah. also the thing. Okay. The problem with Facebook is that it's now way too big. So even when you have a platform as large as mine, they're taking away certain things like sending you messages when somebody goes um, alive or when somebody sends a, sends a, 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 you know, a post or something, you may not see it because it's Facebook is not sending you a notification that somebody is online at that particular moment. So what I've heard from people is that your personal page has become kind of more of a hub for people that are looking to grow their audience or get prospects. And certainly Facebook groups are still the most important um, aspects where people can grow an audience. Uh, and, um, and I'm talking about groups with that not, not just your uh, open fan page, but groups that might be private or public where you actually are in control of what happens in there and the notifications get sent to all those people and it just it's it's just a lot easier to interact with your facebook audience through those groups oh that's awesome well congratulations on your success on facebook and uh good luck with growing out uh instagram and also yeah. congrats uh, for for YouTube. So I love how you are staging it where you're doing two at a time. You focused yeah. on Facebook and YouTube and now you're moving on to doing a little bit more of IG and I see you a little bit more active on Twitter as, as well. <laughs> so that's a good thing to be able to um, be present in all of the platforms. And so another good point is while you may not be able to be 100% uh, in all of them, it is yeah. good to have a presence, right? So right. I am not an active Twitter user, but I have mm -hmm. a Twitter handle, right? Um, and I, I share and I ret retweet. So you want to be able to be on the platform, but you Absolutely. don't necessarily have to use it 
as your primary. My primary currently is uh, Facebook and, of course, uh, Instagram. I allow them to copy my posts over to Twitter. So it's kind of like a secondary type Correct. thing. Correct. And listen, as a solopreneur or as a, per a person starting business, you want to be really disciplined so that this doesn't become overwhelming. I would still, to this day, sit down on a Sunday night and pre-post four or five posts on Facebook, two or three on IG, whatever it is that it doesn't take you more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half of your Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, mm -hmm. but have clarity about what you want to post. And that way you have a constant flow of information sh being shared, but you don't have to spend you know, an hour every day scrolling through all kinds of posts and articles to find out you know, smart information to post and share with your community. It gets overwhelming. And even though it's yeah. an hour every day, that's an hour that you should be that you could be using for all kinds of other things. Yeah. So if you're first starting and it's you're starting to grow, spend some time once a week organizing your posts and pre-posting. Facebook has a way to pre-post. Instagram has an app called uh, Latergram where you can pre-post your Instagram posts. Uh, I don't think Twitter has one of those, but there's a lot of other systems and programs. There's Edgar, there's uh, Hootsuite. There's a lot of other programs. Yeah. Most of them are actually free on their basic plan that you can use to pre-post your stuff. And then once it's posted, you can just tweak and you know share and do little things to help the post look like it's happening live in the moment. That's exactly right. You can go ahead and leverage any one of those pre-scheduling uh, tools to help save your day. Because you don't want to spend, you don't want to be in the middle of your day creating a brand new post. Now, sometimes that happens when events, like maybe uh, someone important passes away or exactly. there's something crazy happening in the news that you could not have seen or foreseen, you know, on a Sunday or whatever, you want to do those. But the basic posts, um, it is good to go ahead and just uh, schedule those ahead of time. Can you believe that it is already 1030? Like that was <laughs> the fastest conversation. An hour my my so I, I want to, though, I want to ask those who are watching to please leave uh, any questions you might have for uh, Javanka in the comments, because we would love to answer them live before we leave. Yeah. leave you guys today so go ahead and if you have a question uh go ahead and leave those and we'll address them here shortly uh, but my last question uh for you Javanka is just around uh being a Latina and and health and wellness did that mm -hmm. help you did that hurt you was it uh just it didn't impact you at all tell us more about uh, being the wonderful, sassy Latina that you are <laughs> in the, the health and wellness space that, in my opinion, from my perspective, and yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's just really not something that brown people are into yeah. uh, as, as much as we would like them to be. It's shifting, right? Um, that, that's just my view. So if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about uh, being a sassy Latina in health and wellness. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, uh, that is one of my other pet peeves is that often I go to conferences and to events, even basic yoga classes. And I'm very often the only person of color in there. There might be one other, maybe an Asian girl sitting in another corner and, um, and, but you barely see brown people in yoga classes or wellness uh, events. And I think that's, uh, that's a travesty, obviously, because this world is for all of us. Yeah. Certainly, the 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 the, the focus of my business, natural cures, herbal, herbal remedies, came from the 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 cultures from outside of of the, the you know the primary culture that in this country, like you know Latinos and Hispanic people, African people, Indian people, Southeast Asians. They have such a wealth of information when it comes to natural cures and herbal, or herbal remedies. It's really fascinating. So all of this is ours to share with the world. So I, it's really sad to me that that uh, that the 
the the wellness world is not tackling people of color, is not embracing people of color, is not like asking them, come join us because we have something amazing. Most of the programs out there are geared towards the the main culture, right? Like the the, the biggest yeah. group of people in this country. You rarely see uh, products that are marketed to a multicultural audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and it's funny that. though, Javanka, I thought a little bit about this and um, from my perspective, I can understand a little bit why I don't like it, but I do understand yeah. why because a lot of us, a lot of, and when I say us, I mean brown people, minorities, we are more focused on making money, you know? Right. We are more focused right. on keeping our families together and keeping them right. safe. You know, right. there, are, there are other taxing priorities <laughs> in our minds other than in health. The, health is absolutely. on top of that. So if we don't have a job that pays enough to right. buy the spinach versus the iceberg, you know, what, right. what can I do? Right. But it is up to people like you and people yeah. like me. Or like you, exactly. And yeah. the truth of the matter is that what we would want and what I would love to see in the wellness world is big brands coming to people like us yeah. and saying, you already have a brand, you are already talking to a multicultural audience. You, We are, here we are. I, I'm here to support you in this journey so that you can attract more, more of the same. And hopefully get people excited about this because even if money is an issue, we're not expecting you to go and, and buy really fancy coffee and put butter in it and just spend yeah. tons of money on that kind of stuff. I am here to teach you how to use whatever budget you have, small as it might be, to make choices that will carry you and your family through a journey of health and so that you can live a healthy, strong life yeah. for generations. And we are a lot of it too. very strong and healthy people, and we need to re-embrace the wisdom of our ancestors. Amen. I, I totally agree with that. And a lot of it, some of it has to do with money, but most of it has to do with mindset. We Absolutely. just believe it costs more. We Absolutely. just believe it takes more time. We just believe that it won't taste the same. We just have all these erroneous beliefs yeah. about what it means to be healthy and well um, and be a minority in doing so. So I applaud you for your platform of uh, herbalism, Likewise. of veganism, of all of the things that you were doing to push the conversation forward okay. to make our communities healthier. Because that's what this is all about, especially this is all about. And, and guys, if you have not yet gone to Javanka's site, please do head out to JavankaSierras.com. She has a wealth of information. I am just so excited and honored to be Thank in your so space. Much. And I am excited about how we're going to partner together with Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. So if you're watching and you're in the diva hood, you should know that Javanka is an instructor in the diva hood and she does have a course that we'll be launching soon all about herbs. So I'm excited <laughs> to bring that to the divas in the diva hood. So I thank you for sharing your wealth thank of knowledge you so on YouTube <laughs> with us. So and to the link we... brothers, just continue to share these particular uh, uh, interviews because there's all of them. I mean, the, the six that came before mine just has so much amazing information out there. Guys, um, I, I'm go somebody has a question. Nicole, can you write that um, and say that while I go get my, my battery because um, oh, yeah, <laughs> my yeah, computer yeah. Right only has 3% battery and it's go about ahead. to die. So I'll be back in 30 seconds. Yes, so Velasca, thank you so very much for your question. And your question is, what is the best way to get to know your community and really understand what, the, what they need? And I can start dialoguing on, on that because I do have a community as well. It's Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. It's on Facebook. Uh, we do a little bit on Twitter. Uh, we do a lot on Instagram as well. And the best way to get to know them is by talking with them, is by engaging them. Um, and, uh, and sometimes for me, that includes... Uh, doing free challenges because of course I'm in health and wellness and we talk uh, a lot about maybe like a water challenge or an abs challenge so it really just depends Valeska on what your niche is so if you have a particular uh, niche that you specialize in and you want to reach your audience think of ways 
that you as a customer would want to engage with a business owner. So put your customer hat on and think of, huh, what would I want to hear from someone like me? What would I want to know from someone like me? So just sharing free information and not always trying to sell, sell, sell. It's really not about that. You know, yeah. share from the heart first and everything else will come after that, especially yeah. if you know that you're giving good content and that yeah. you're engaging them and you're really trying to solve a problem right. and not just trying to make a buck. So you lead with your heart. And that's that. That's basically yeah. my advice. Yeah. You just lead with I your heart and then you further. get to know them. Yeah, I will go a little further and also say that uh, ask them what they want. Right? Even if it's just a small group of people, if you only have like 20 followers, uh, you can still ask them and uh, maybe offer them something like say, you know what, um, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to offer uh, what you would want. What's in it for you? What do you want? What will make this process easier for you? What would you want to hear from me? And then certainly, you know, engage them with, really fun things. I know Nicole is actually the expert at this. She loves offering her community, you know, we're going to do this little challenge and the winner of this challenge will get whatever, a Fitbit or will get, you know, a, a, a branded bottle or whatever it is that will get people excited. I mean, it's not just the little touch key that you're going to offer somebody. It's truly that you care. They can they can tell that you want to help them yeah. and they they will come. Trust me, they will you will have your super fans. You will have your people that will always open your emails. You will have your people that will always be there buying your products and slowly but steadily that that audience will grow. Patience is key. I cannot stress that enough. Yeah. You want to have a steady pace. But you don't want to get rid of, you don't want to, you, you don't want to feel like, like you are not doing enough and that you feel like you're failing. I think there's a, a, a quote on the book that I say, by the time you see somebody being super successful, right? Like by the time you see the Cardi B's of the world, uh, you believe that they became successful overnight. But the truth of the matter is that these people have been hustling potentially for years. There's yeah. always, don't get me wrong, there's always going to be the crazy Kardashian sister who was born wealthy and is piggybacking on the Someone fate of the that. older sisters, you know, and she's riding that wave. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people like Nicole or people like me who don't, they weren't born with a silver spoon, no. um, they mm -hmm. came into this industry with no connections, no contacts, no audience, nobody that will follow them and literally started from the ground up. And um, you, by the time you see somebody on TV, <laughs> there's been quite literally years of working 50 hours a week of, you know, like crazy, you know, hustling yeah and loving hustling so it's important that we all keep that into perspective because yeah. social media can be really deceiving. Uh, yeah deceiving yeah mm -hmm. yeah we don't want to be ghosted into thinking that success is overnight but we also don't want to be ghosted into thinking that entrepreneurship looks like uh, a wonderful book and a wonderful outfit and your makeup's done and your hair is all together and you're in Amazon or you're in a uh, Barnes and Noble or somewhere looking fabulous while <laughs> you're on your computer. That's really not what it looks like yeah. either. Right. So there are all these uh, preconceived ideas and yeah. uh, notions about what yeah. entrepreneurship looks like. Uh, so follow your own journey and do it from your yeah. heart, you know, and I loved your advice, Javanka, about just asking the question, just ask yeah. them, ask them, you yeah. know, what do you want to hear from me? What do you want to learn? What about this, this, and this vote? Like, Let's vote. I'm going to offer A, B, and C, which one would you prefer? So just get out there, do the dirty work and ask the questions. That's so it. we are at the 45 minute mark. Oh my God, I, I knew go, this was going to happen, by the way. <laughs> we were going to be here for like an hour. 
Oh, yeah. Like, I don't want to let you go. That's why I just keep babbling. But before I do let you go, it's coming to an end, you guys. I do want to ask just one more question, if that's okay. What is next for Javanka Sierras? What's coming up, friend? What do you want the people to know? You know, this is a really good question, and it actually will actually be a good point for people because for the last maybe year and a half to two years, I've been... Uh, I've had a dream of creating a herbal supplement line. And I've had some ups and downs with uh, some business, some business, uh, potential business partners that kind of fell through and decided that I wasn't going to do it and then became fearful about the idea of going into business for products, right? And so this uh, has been a, a really interesting journey. And it's also the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because it's important for people to know that even, even when you have been an entrepreneur for a few years, when your business is pivoting, when you are actually shifting into another area, that fear, that concern, that like, how am I going to pay my bill? Do I, bills? Do I actually have enough money to go into another side of business? Who is going to be my partner? How am I going to do this? It's very, very normal. It's human nature. We just have to embrace that fear. And it's like that book from this author that I can't remember right now, but will tell you, you know what? Instead of trying to get away from the fear and claim that you can actually control it and move it away, instead you're going to say, this is here. This is part of who it is. Mm -hmm. being human. Yeah. I'm going to tell fear from now on, you're going to be on the backseat of this ride. That's right. And you don't have a say in where we go. <laughs> or what music we listen to, mm -hmm. or which road we take. No. You're just there in you case a bear out. chase me and I know how to get away from it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just there because it's, you, you're part of being human, but I'm not going to let you define me any longer. No, no. So to answer your question, the long-winded answer is the next year will be focused uh, on a nervous supplement line. That is super awesome. That uh, uh, well, the first line of products will be to help with digestion. So it'll be a supplement line for digestive health. And honey, I will be your first customer because I totally <laughs> need that. And I'm so excited for what's to come uh, for you. Thank you so much for being a friend, first off. Thank yeah, you so right. much for the dialogue today. It was absolutely fabulous. And thank you for everyone who's watching. If you still have some questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. We'll yeah. still be around for a few minutes to read them and we can answer them in written form. But thank you guys so very much for joining the Leap Frogger's live series. Thank you this so is the much. Seven, and I will miss doing this. It's been a wonderful experience. So thank you to Natalie for giving me the opportunity and the platform to do so. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And Javaka, I'll thank hand it over to you for any closing words. Uh, yeah, no, thank you so much again for all of this. This has been an, an amazing journey. Uh, and we, I am so proud of being part of this book, uh, not only as a friend, but as part of the book too. Get the book and uh, just make sure that you follow that dream because that that passion is what's going to fuel you through the years of hustling until you get your success. And know, know for a fact that you will find a, a group of mentors that will help you through that journey. There is a, a group there for you. There is a posse for you, just like Nicole and I have uh, become posse for one another yes. <laughs> for one another the people out there to to support you in this journey so never ever ever uh just relinquish in that dream ah all right well that's a great way to end this series thank you javanka thank you natalie thank you guys for watching until we meet again you guys have a great day bye bye